for this week's Prep and Data, Gwilym is teaching us all about market basket analysis. So we've got quite simple data um, to start off with. We've just got a few transactions and the items that are in those transactions. Some transactions have two items, some transactions have three items. So our first step is to reshape this data so that we have an item, a single item for each row. So we're going to first of all split these items out uh, using the split values, custom split, comma, and split off all values. We're doing that because then it's dynamic. Um, it doesn't matter later on if an, it an order has five items or six items, it will always just split off all those items. Similarly, now when we pivot our data, um, by using the wildcard um, search for our pivot, and the items dash, then that means that no matter how many splits we have, it will always capture all of them, which is great. Um, we've also just got rid of um, that uh, pivot one names field because that's just literally um, telling us the order that those items were in that um, transaction, and we don't really need that information anymore. I'm going to get rid of that because it's messing up my nice, neat workflow. Cool. So. Now that we've done that, um, then we can start calculating our first metric, and this is the support. So for the support, we need to know for each item how many transactions does it appear in, and what are the total number of transactions. So starting off with the total number of transactions, um, something interesting that I learned as part of this challenge actually, is that count distinct, you need um, an LOD within Tableau Prep to use it. So um, in my mind, if I'm doing a count distinct of transaction ID, then I naturally mean I want to calculate it across the entire data set. But Tableau Prep doesn't know that. It might, you might be wanting to do it at um, each row, which obviously would only give you a one for each row because each transaction, each row has one transaction ID in it. So you need to wrap it in a fixed LOD without um, the any dimension or anything to just tell it, do it across the whole data set. So that's something interesting that I learned as part of this challenge. Very cool. And then um, we also now want to know for each of these items, how many transaction IDs are associated with them. So we build this one out uh, in the different way of building a, a fixed LED in Tableau Prep. And we just um, are grouping by these items split and we're counting the distinct transaction IDs. So cool, we're just renaming that to the number of purchases and our support is then just the number of purchases over the total. So great. Now um, we're wanting to create those association rules. So linking one item to another item. And we don't want this to be calculated for every possible combination of items. Like if an item is never bought with another item, then we don't want to waste computing power computing um, the later metrics. We just want to have those that exist in our current data set, the pairings um, of items, if that makes sense. So the way that we're doing that um, is we're first of all calculating this, uh, creating this calculator field called other items. So we've got all of our items in our transaction here. Um, we've got uh, one item at the moment per row. So for example, with the top one, we just want to remove this item that our row is focused on from this items list, and then we know what other items are in our order. So we can see in the top row, uh, we're focusing on razors, we're removing it from the rest of the transaction, so then the other item is shaving soap. And that also works, obviously, when we've got three items, we just have two items now in this other items column. And then we're going to do a very similar thing uh, to what we did here to reshape our data um, to mean that we have, you know, uh, a row for each different combination of items. So where we have um, this order here, for example, the razors and shaving soap, we'll have a row for the razors and shaving soap and a row for the shaving soap and razors, you know, in opposite columns. But when we, for example, have this bath bomb with the hand soap and moisturizer, we'll have you know, bath bomb will be in this column twice and hand soap and moisturizer will be on each row. So we've done all that. And uh, if we just click on the bath bomb actually here to show you what I meant uh, visually, then yeah, we've got a row for each of those different item combinations that are in that order. 
and then we've just created our association rule. Um, so this is just with our item split and we're adding in that uh, the arrow, the glim suggested and our other item split is the other items basically in the association rule. Then we're just doing um, a little bit of renaming. So we're renaming um, our item split to be the left hand side of our association rule. So you can see here um, that this is hand soap and bath bomb. So we're going to want to rename this the right hand side of our association rule. So we do that as well. Um, and we're also just going to therefore our support that we have here at the moment is going to be our left hand side support. So we'll rename that um, and we'll rename as well um, this uh, number of purchases to that corresponds to our left hand side uh, count basically of the number of times that's purchased. So that all sets us up nicely to move on. We have up here, we basically now want the information about our right hand side, don't we? Because we've got all this left hand side information, now we want our right hand side information. So to get our right hand side support through, then we're just going to go back to our support step here where we calculated it all for all the different items. We're just going to group by the item split, group by the right hand side support, and then we can join that in um, using the join condition of right hand side AR and item split, and we just get our right hand side AR, um, right hand side support through, sorry, um, because we renamed it in the step here. So that's nice. That's coming together. We only have two more metrics left to calculate. So if we come on to our next step where we're calculating our confidence. Now for our confidence, um, we want to know basically how many times does this association rule occur? So um, that's what we calculate here with this fixed LED. We're clicking on, we're just grouping by the association rule this time rather than the left hand side item or the right hand side item. We care about that specific ordering of, you know, from this item to that item. So we care about the direction. Um, and we do that calculation there, rename it to be um, association rule count. And then our confidence is simply this association rule count over our left hand side count. So Gwilym explains that really well if we just flick. Um, back to prep and data here. Um, so the confidence is um, to do with, right, so in this example we've got moisturiser to hand soap, so the confidence of that rule is the number of transactions that contains moisturiser that also contain hand soap, so that's our association rule count. Um, and then we want to add the total number of transactions that contain moisturiser, which is our left hand side count. So, yeah, um, it's which um, transactions contain both of those things over just which, how many other times is that um, left-hand side item ordered. Um, I think I butchered that a bit more than how Gwilym explains it, but hopefully you get what we're trying to do here. So, um, we've currently got 18 rows at the moment. We can see we've got some duplicates in our association rules. So we're going to do an aggregate step here um, to just aggregate. So we have one row for each association rule. We're bringing through the left hand and the right hand side and the information about the support and the confidence as well. Just making sure that we group by so there's no summing or averaging or any other calculations going on. We just want to group by those. So now we only get 14 rows. And finally, we're wanting to calculate the lift. So the lift is simply the confidence over the right hand side support. And if we go back to prep and data, then we'll have a little looky again um, at the lift. So this is to do with, um, you know, is it more than the expected basically? Um, so I'll let you read through the paragraph and understand it better. You can always reach out to Gwilym if you have questions about um, any of these metrics, I'm sure he'd be very happy to chat to you in further detail about them. So hopefully this solution was useful for you and thanks for watching.